Yeah, so hey everybody, this is uh, Sam Shankund here playing a simul. I'm still working out some technical points, but hopefully it will turn out okay. Um, so yeah, I have um, what looks like 10 opponents today, which I'm looking forward to playing with. And uh, yeah, this should be fun. Uh, for some reason though, it's trying to find all the games and it's not showing up very well. Let me refresh this page. Um, yeah, so it looks like I only have one game going on, it looks like. I have this one as well, but I don't know. I have a million games all against this Casper. Um, I don't know if Casper is like a computer of Vontrust.com or something, but um, I'm playing like a bunch of games against the same person, so I'm see if I can abort one game against this guy. This is another abort, and then this one is still alive, uh, so yeah, I don't know why I'm not seeing all of the games, but I think, yeah, so here I see I have just a few games going, but, um, yeah, so this game here with Pines looks interesting, um, I think I can probably castle because if d5 I can go a6 and his bishop is almost trapped, I could also just play d6 first if I'm worried about that, so like d6 and then d5, a6 seems totally fine for me, so let's go d6 and not let him play d5 and uh and d6 first because d5 a6 so it should be okay um let me confuse as to why this isn't working so if i start playing here yeah so so tech guys i see like a lot of just said games currently stopped game is currently stopped it's not letting me play on those boards that's probably why it's not showing up anyhow i'm going to focus on the ones that are currently going on and leave the technical work to the tech team um yeah, so bishop c6 feels really strange to me because I don't see a reason to give up that bishop. Um, and now I already like my position with the bishop pair. This feels like a pretty good king's Indian to me. Um, white's going to be really slow getting like c4, c5, and black's going to get f5 a lot faster than he normally does in any king's Indian setup. So black's position looks pretty good already. Um, so I have auto switch on. And then here, this is um, part of that. Yeah, okay, so let's play d4 and go into some kind of, let's see, I'm playing a lot of games against Casper. I don't know how that happened, but I guess that's the way it's gonna work. Um, yeah, so here f3 from white, uh, should be um i think i'm just gonna play like a normal king's indian play f4 yeah so d6 here from casper that's sort of weird to not get into like a normal sicilian but d5 e5 seems to just lose a pawn in any number of ways here um let's go d5 and preserve structural integrity but yeah it looks like i think casper might be just a chess.com computer um, or a, a chess 24 computer, but, uh, yeah, um, for some reason, that's all I get to play against, because that's the games that are popping up whenever I click on the links, um, but this one with Pines <coughs> is a real person, so, so here I'm going to start throwing stuff on the king's side, because that's what you do in the king's Indian, and yeah, Casper is just giving all the pieces away, so if this is a machine, at least the games will be over quickly. Um, so keep on developing, a6, let's go d5, f5, <coughs> so check on d5, and this looks utterly devastating, so here, it's castle, I'm not worried about knight e4, um, yeah, there's some technical glitches here, I'm sorry in advance, um, let's go knight d4, bishop d7, so I think knight e6 looks suitably violent, Queen e7, I guess I can duck the knight back. 
G5, let's blow the position up and try to get this over with. So here, um, I'll take this one, now E5, and yeah, so this looks very violent as well. I think this Casper is just a computer program, and I've accidentally messed something up in terms of the settings, but or clicked on the wrong accept challenge, but here, um, at least it's playing fast and then not distracting me too much from the games that matter. Uh, so yeah, in this position, in this position, Alex, are you there? Okay. Um, is there some issue not letting me play against the people actually? Here, and then this one I can refresh, and this one refresh. Okay, that one's opponent's disconnected, so that's probably a... Uh... Okay, so here, and then I think we're good to go now. All right, so then let's go. All right, so I think I should have all the games uh, set correctly to, to play with me, right? Um, so, yeah, we're back in this position with Pines here. And I think that Black's best plan should be to reroute this Rook to G7. So I'm going to play Rook F7. That's a pretty typical King's Indian maneuver. I may play Bishop F8 as further prophylaxis against C5. But um, otherwise, uh, yeah. So now I think we're, we're underway. Sorry for any technical hiccup, but it looks like we're getting started here. So I'm trying to play a variety of different openings just um, to keep things as fun as possible. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, so this, um, all these Casper ones, I'm just going to resign to get it out of the way. So I'm going to resign here and resign here and resign here. Okay, so now we're back to what is hopefully the 10 games that are that are actually working. So yeah, um, let's go Bishop F8 now and stop any nonsense. All right, so we got a Sicilian, that should be some fun. Um, all right, so let's play the trustful repertoire here. And I'm not much of a King's Indian player, but let's give it a try. And here I'll play Nimzo. Um, so yeah. Um, Knight f3, so my understanding is you're supposed to always meet knight f3 with knight f6. Alright, so I guess we play the Nimzo here. Yeah, so this double Fianchetto is not wildly scary. I lost a game to Fedeseev in this line though, so um, you do have to be somewhat careful, but I don't think it's crazy challenging. Alright, so let's see, Rubenstein, Nimzo, yeah, so b4 here. Um, <laughs> I guess that's hoping to get c5 through. It makes some sense. Um, I'm debating whether I want to play b6 or not. I think I'm just going to start attacking instead. Um, yeah, so here's a king's Indian. Maybe I can play it from the white side. 
All right, so Nidorf, what are people doing nowadays? Um, let's play H3. This is supposed to be a fun move. All right, so H3 from this guy, I think makes less sense because I'm not scared of G4 or anything. So let's go, I could probably go Queen B6 here already, actually. If I go Queen B6, Knight C3, CD4, Knight B5, E5, it's getting messy, but I'm not sure I like it. Um, let's just be calm and play Bishop F5. I don't think we need to rock the boat just yet. All right, so now we get to see if I know how to play the King's Indian. And here's Nimzo, let's go B6. All right, let me try this funky move, Knight G2. It's not amazing, but it's probably fine. All right, so e5, knight d2. So white has played knight h4 here to chase my bishop, but because I had played um, e6, uh, h6, it's not an issue. All right, so I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing in this king's Indian. I just sort of played it because I thought it would be fun. So, uh, oh, and this guy's an fm? Oh, shoot. I didn't, I should have uh, been a bit more careful. All right, let's, um, let's play knight c6 and go into a main line and learn a thing or two when I get crushed. All right, so king h1, let's play rook g7. I'm now threatening knight g2. Yeah, so here, c3, sure. b6 is fine. Why must I lose to this bugs? Oh, you want a Sicilian? Let's play a Sicilian. I will not turn down that invitation. All right, so here, castle, and now... I think I played c5 here once upon a time. Okay, so knight g1 is a very passive but very sensible move, um, stopping black from executing some of the biggest threats, but I still think it looks very dangerous. Although, yeah, so here, um, I don't think b6 helps me because he can play c5 anyway, so I'm going to play rook c8 so that I can potentially meet c5 with c6. All right, so bishop e6 from Vili. This is what I played with Kamsky once upon a time before I knew how to play chess. And um, I don't think it's very good. All right, so knight bd2. And here, if I go queen b6, queen b3, c4, queen b6, a b6, white is in time for knight h4, which is annoying. So I'm going to start with h6. All right, so let's play a knight orf here. So c6, d4, yeah. So this is, of course, heavy theory King's Indian, and I don't know a thing about it. I didn't realize I was playing an FM. I thought it was 1900. So, um, yeah, this is going to be a rough game, probably. Let's go knight h5. I think that's supposed to be pretty normal. All right, bishop d2, I don't understand. So I'm going to take it. Knight bd7, sure. I'll go bishop b 2 Knight e5 here. Doesn't seem exciting. Uh, let's play queen b6. All right, so it takes. And now here my thought was d5, and this bishop d2 move doesn't look wildly helpful. And white could end up with an isolated pawn uh, without much compensation. Yeah, so a3, and I duck my bishop back to e7, and this is like a normal IQP position, but bishop d2 is a wasted move. Doesn't help white. Bishop would be better on a square like g5. All right, so this Bogues wants to play Razor with me. And I think he knows that I just did a course on it, so I'm going to see if I can bust my own course or if he wants to um, find a way to cause trouble for it. Okay, so c5, I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I have to imagine if I've played knight h5 and white doesn't play g3, I'm sort of supposed to go knight f4 next. All right, so queen b3, and now I think this endgame is really bad for white. All right, e6, let's go queen d2, like a normal rouser. Yeah, so looks like we have auto switch. Okay, so here Pines has played rook c1, which makes some sense. Um, I guess white's trying to get ready for c5, but I still don't think it's wildly scary. So I'm going to go bishop e7 to overprotect that, um, that knight. All right, so I will castle here against Bogues. Yeah, and here this end game looks really bad for white because b5, b4 is coming. I mean, he can try like a3, b5, rook c1, but then I have the plan of knight around to a4, which is also really good. Um, uh, so yeah, for some reason it's not auto-switching perfectly every time. All right, so h5, I thought the whole point of this line was I can always meet h5 with bishop g5, but yeah. So bishop e2 and now b5, b4 comes. All right, so Bogues is playing this um, 
this bishop d7 line, which is interesting. All right, so e4 looks like a mistake because now um, the d3 score will be weak. So if I take on e4, he has to take with the pawn because otherwise the knight on h4 will be loose. And then once I go knight c5, there's a problem on d3. Um, why isn't it auto switching on me? Should be. Okay, so I'm all fish here. Castles, I played before. Um, yeah, there's some bug in this side. I hope I have all the games started, but let's see how many am I playing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like I might only be playing nine. There's missing one. Yeah, actually, that's true. There's a bug, and you you are not able to switch um, between games. I okay. I'm sending the last link. All right. If you prefer, you can open each link and just uh, this, yeah, this is fine. I'm in good shape. Okay, so here we got the last one. Uh, it says opponent disconnected, so he's not even Sorry. playing. Okay. Um. Yeah. So here I'm gonna go knight e4 and try to challenge that b4 pawn. This one. Um. Oh, okay. I really had the wrong one. So here, this last one here is a uh, Pablo. Okay. So there we go. So let's go e4 and then. Hopefully, if I refresh this page, it will be able to auto switch for me. Auto switch is, is auto switch on. Yeah, okay. All right. So here with this game, why must I lose to this Bogues? Um, Black has started with b5, uh, which I actually think is inaccurate. And I prefer knight takes d4 in the course. And the reason is that I think white's bishop wants to come back to e3 anyway. And uh, this way I'll be able to take on d4 with um, with the bishop as needed. All right, so a4, I don't really understand uh, what I'm supposed to do, but I'm going to go h6, g5, and knight g6. That seems like a good way to put pieces on the king side. All right, so Karo can. Let's take the space. All right, so queen d3 from pines. Makes some sense. Uh, white wants to play c5 next. And... Um, so I'm going to reroute my queen to like h5 or g6. That seems like a good place to start. So here black can get h4, but I don't think it helps that much. Yeah, so this Bogues, I think, has made some mistakes because here in this line, you really cannot allow white to play g4 with uh, the bishop on e3. If white gets to play g5, I think he's going to be much better. And so when white's bishop is on g5, sometimes you can, um, you can meet g4 with h5. But if I ever play bishop e3, you really want to be playing h5 yourself. Um... Yeah, so here I like my position quite a bit already. Let's see, so Pines is playing c5. He wants to crush the queen side. Makes total sense. Um, but my rook on c8 is defended, so I'm not wildly concerned. But maybe it's actually a bit annoying. Um, so... I can start with queen g6, and this is now threatening the g2 pawn. Okay, so e5, and we're going to get this structure in this King's Indian, which is interesting. All right, b4 already. I think it probably makes sense to include knight takes c6 here. Um, just because if knight c2, knight e5 might be a bit annoying. So I like taking on c6 here, and then, um, yeah. So this position now, white's well, very solid, but it's pretty miserable for him. Uh, so I'm going to start with just a simple developing move. All right, so bishop f5, I think I've always played this line. All right, so cd6, I guess we take back, and then... Okay, so b5 here already. That looks skeptical to me, but what do I know? I think this is a line where black has played h5, but here it seems skeptical, so I'm just going to go bishop g2. All right, so I took this, and then knight back to e2 here. And, um... Okay, so knight c5 in this game. Wait, can I not just kick the knight with b4? I don't understand. Let's kick the knight. All right, rook fb1. Um, I'm going to play g6 and just blunt that diagonal in advance. All right, so he trades a pair of rooks. Fine. Bishop takes b4, but yeah. So here, um, I can certainly... Let me start with knight d4. If he plays bishop b7, I might just take his pawn. I don't see why not. Um... 
Because I will attack the bishop with the gain of tempo and he won't be in time to play d5. So this one here, knight e5, sure. Um, so if I guess if I play c5, he has knight c6, which is maybe a little bit annoying, but I don't know how much I really care. The other options are not great. If I play rook a6, he has b3. So let's just go c5. Um, yeah, so Bogues is playing bishop b7. And here, I'm kind of tempted to take his b4 pawn, but... Um, if I take before he goes queen c7, queen back to d2, and like rook fc8 and starts throwing stuff at me, it might be better to just set uh, my attack in motion. So if I go like, actually, what I'm going to do is start with g5. Now, if he, well, g5, he can go knight h5, and then with bishop h3 to g4. So if I start with g5, knight d7, h4, mm, he can play d5, but it feels very skeptical. Let's just start throwing stuff. We're play we're having fun here. All right, so queen e1 is a bad move. I go knight d3. All right, so let's see this Karo Khan. All right, so I'm going to castle here. I'm quite fine with my knight going to h1. Uh, so yeah, he goes knight a c6. And my thought was here I could play rook a6 and that I don't particularly care if he takes my bishop. Uh, so let's give that a try. Yeah, so he goes knight h5 and now... I can't take on b4 because of bishop g5, but if I start with bishop h3, I'm going to chase this knight. I think he had to bring the knight back the other way. All right, so he goes, um, this guy goes knight e1. That's fine. I'm going to start with bishop d7 to stop queen b5 and to get my bishop out of danger. So yeah, here, let's go grab this one seems fine, then grab h4 and grab everything. All right, so Dr. Boki is playing rook a3, and I'm going to keep pushing with g5. All right, so one point of playing g6 is now I can play bishop f6, and my bishop can get to g7. All right, so I don't know much about these Karo Khan lines anymore. Once upon a time I did, but that was a long time ago. All right, so take that. And here I'm going to be like two pawns up and basically crushing. That King's Onion game looks scary, though. All right, so sure, f3 from Mulfish makes sense. Um, I guess he probably wants to play e4, so I should bolster the d5 pawn. So I dump this back. Okay, rook c8, but I don't believe you're going to play c5. Um, so I could play knight h4 here. It's not the dumbest thing I could imagine. Uh, but I'm going to start with knight b3. I don't really... I think this is probably more professional. All right, so knight f3 from from Pines. And somehow I'm not breaking through on the king's side the way I would have liked. Maybe Roger Bob was right, and I just have no clue how to play king's Indian. Um, so let's go queen h5 and put further pressure on that knight. Sure, so a5, a3 seems obvious enough. Knight bd7. Let's go knight g3, uh, look, eyeballing the f5 square and stopping any hope of h5. Um, this looks pretty good for me. Anywhere else it's my move? Uh, Bogues has moved. Okay, so here, this looks strategically busted for black if I play e5. Um, I, don't, I think he basically will never make another active move for the rest of the game. All right, so knight g6. I think you're usually supposed to meet this move with knight e1 so that you can um, threaten g4. Uh, so let's go knight e1. All right, so take, take, sure. a3 from Wolfish. Makes sense, but I'm going to gain space with b3. Eventually, if my knight lands on a4, white's going to have a bad day. Um, but maybe he can make counterplay in the meantime. And at some point, I mean, obviously not with my rook hanging, but at some point c3 could be a threat. Okay, so Dr. Boki is playing bishop c4. Um, let's start throwing stuff at the king. Bishop h6, rook e8. Anywhere else where it's my move? Vili has played h6, so castle. Um, yeah, so I really like my position in this Vili game. Um, 
Knight f5 and f4 could be coming pretty soon. I'm glad we got the technical glitches out of the way. That was stressing me out a bit, and now I'm much happier. Yay. Yeah, so I think Molefish has to go for e4 pretty soon here. Like, if I'm allowed to just, like, castle and play knight d7, knight b6, knight a4 without any resistance, black's just going to win. Uh, that takes some time, though, and white can hope to make something happen in that time. But the the bishop on e2 is very bad, and he doesn't have any counterplay, so I really think he should be blowing up the position with e4. When, of course, I'm not going to take the pawn, but uh, at least white can hope to open the e-file that way. All right, so pawn says, whoa, pawn sacrificed on me. I don't believe that. Uh, so I'm going to take it, and I don't believe it. Yeah, so here I go bishop g4, attack that knight, and if he moves it away, I'm going to uh, go h4, h5. Yeah, so e4 comes. I think g6 is better than h7. Here, I don't need to tuck the bishop all the way away. Okay, so now white's a piece down, and I'm not sure what the whole point of this sacrifice was. Um, let's take the knight, and then put my bishop on d6, and I'm nice and solid. And a piece up. So I think Pines was doing pretty well there for a while, but now seems to have lost the thread. This position here is not as nice as I would like, actually. I think I've misplayed it to some degree, but... Um, because after f5, I'm going to struggle to do like a e takes f5, f4 trick. But if I play f3, f4, and then bishop maybe d2 and put my knight on f2 and play h3, it can't be that dangerous. Um, so, uh, and at some point I can invade the queen side. All right, so molefish is moved. Let's get the king out of dodge. All right, so now h4 comes. So now I should open the game and give my so knight e2, and if this knight gets to g3, that looks really annoying. Um, I could play bishop h4 and then meet knight g3 with knight h4, but after bishop g4, he can play h3, and the rook on a3 shows some purpose. I guess that's some deep understanding. Let's throw f5, because I think if he gets knight g3, I'm going to lose that opportunity. All right, so bishop b5, sure. Let's break the pin and prepare to, no. Well, I was thinking of rook e7, but then knight e4 is a little annoying because bishop h8, there will be bishop g5. So, um, let me actually start by taking this knight. I don't mind transforming the pawn structure like this. All right, so he goes h5. Um, let's start with c3. All right, so pines is trading queens with a piece less, so that's not gonna work. Um, yeah, so here, if I go f3 and knight gets to f2, I should have things pretty well under control. Here, um, f4 feels like it might be asking for some kind of trouble with queen b6, h5, knight g4, but maybe I don't care. If I go knight f5, he can go knight b6. I'm going to not chicken out. Let's play f4. All right, so bishop d2, totally sensible move. He wants to get this bishop to a square like b4. So let me play rook c8, and now let him decide how he wants to deal with taking on d5. Um, so yeah, this guy takes back. That's unsurprising. And now I thought I could go rook e7. Uh, it was not such a bad idea. All right, so c5. Let's go bishop e3. He can play c4 if he wants, but... Yeah, so here bishop d6, and I have it all under control. Um, so knight f5 now. Um, I think I'm happy to let him take my bishop. I really don't want to um, vacate the d4 square. I don't want to let him sacrifice a pawn with, um, with d4 to open his position. He's, happy. He's welcome to take my bishop if he wants. And if he plays knight, h knight g3 to get to e4, I might just throw h5 at him and not care. So I'm ready for h5 next move, essentially, is what's going on here. And uh, maybe he can play h5 himself, but it doesn't look good. Actually, that's not that bad for him. Maybe it is. After h5, I can play knight takes f5, ef, and then bishop f3, but I don't know. I probably could have done this better. All right, so knight g3 from Dr. Boki, but this sort of feels like he's asking for it. 
So if I take this one and then I get my bishop to like f5 or g4, I'm starting to make some kind of counterplay, I think. Um, so do I want the bishop on f5 or g4? It's a good question. Um, this rook on a3 is starting to look very useful. I'm starting to understand why he played it. Because bishop g4, he can play h3 without running into knight takes h3. Um, and if bishop h5, h3, if bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, he can play knight g3. But there I could play bishop takes f3 and knight h4. So that will take the g2 pawn, which is really not the end of the world for white, but it's at least interesting. Um, I'm going to go bishop f5. If he plays h3, I'm not sure what I'll do. I have to decide if I want to sacrifice on it, if I want to play bishop. I could just duck the bishop back and get ready for g4 later as well. All right, so this this seems like a sensible move. Um, let's bring this rook to c7 to threaten his stuff. All right, so here I'm going to go um, bishop b5 and get ready for rook c7. All right, so knight there. Let's go knight f2 to d3. Seems sensible enough. OK, so here I actually have a choice. I actually think I want to take with the knight. Because once I do that and my other rook comes to c6, it seems very hard for white to stop c3. So let's take with the knight. Uh, I thought white couldn't play that. And here this looks like bad news. OK, so pines is doing this, but after rook c7, I'm a piece up. So that should be good enough. All right, h3 here. Let's just start attacking. Um, seems good enough. Um, Let's see how anyone else, people are still waiting to move. Yeah, so here are rook c6. Okay, so black closes the game here, but I always thought these positions were super dangerous for him. Like if I go g3 next, he cannot play h4 because g4 traps his bishop, and then I'm threatening bishop takes h5, and I can go knight g2. I just don't think b5, b4 is fast enough. Um, Okay, so Pines is doing this, but now rook c2 is going to take his bishop. So that's uh, that's going to work for me. Also, bishop f1 is coming. Um, so Jesus vp10 has, I think, a pretty reasonable position here. But once my knight comes to d3, uh, white's maybe a little bit better. Um, we'll have to see if he can generate attacking chances. I think my most interesting game, yeah, so b6 I don't like because I'm going to go c5 anyway and it didn't stop me and it just makes more weaknesses. Um, I think my most interesting game was this King's Indian, which was quite interesting, which I can't find now. Um, but it's this Dr. Boki game. So yeah, this Dr. Boki game, yeah, so he plays h3 and now I have a choice to make. So I can play bishop h5 when... If he plays knight g3, I can take it and meet something like queen takes f3. Well, queen f3, I have knight h3. If rook f3, I have knight h4. And then I think that's pretty good. I can also just retreat this bishop. Go like bishop f5, knight g3, bishop d7, and then h4 is coming. That doesn't look stupid either. Or excuse me, g4 is coming. So, but my bishop will sort of get kicked a bit. Knight g3, bishop d7, c6, and that's a bit annoying. I'm not sure. So... If I play bishop h5, he cannot play g4. If knight g3, bishop takes f3. And then after rook takes f3, knight h4, he cannot play rook g3 anymore. So this feels a bit risky, but I'm going to go for bishop h5. And I actually don't see a great way for him to stop knight h4. All right, so here. OK, so he plays bishop c3, which makes some sense because he doesn't want to let um, he plays c3, but I believe I can anchor my bishop on c2 and cause a lot of trouble that way. All right, so rookie one, but knight d3 takes material. Um, let's see what else we got. <sighs> Should drink lots of protein while playing. That helps things. All right, so Vili is still thinking. Molefish, still thinking. Bogues, still thinking. I think Bogues really needs to play h5 here. If I play h5, he's going to have a bad day. If he plays h5, gh, and bishop h4, the game continues. It's probably ugly for him, but it's not, like, over-over. Maybe it is over-over. 
Right, so here DC is played. Um, I'm happy to take this with the queen. I don't need to do anything fancy with knight d3. Alright, so b4 from Vili, but this should be well met by knight d5. And now at some point I can even play a3. And white is really struggling with development as well here, which is... Or black, excuse me, is struggling with development. This whole h6, a6, b5, b4. You can get away with that kind of stuff sometimes if the position is closed enough, but that's not the case here. Okay, so Pines plays this, but after bishop c4, I'm going to take that bishop. Um, okay, so bishop f4 here from Toro, sure. Let's play rook d7. And um, yeah, so b5, let's play g3, and he cannot play h4. Yeah, so he does play knight g3, but my thought was here I could do this. Um, all right, so knight d3. I'm quite happy to trade queens if he's left with the weak c7 pawn. Um, so, let's see, anybody waiting for a move? So Vili takes this way, and I take that. Yeah, so he goes like this, but now I'm going to grab the g2 pawn. And that's not the end of the world for white, but it's maybe a bit uncomfortable. All right, so this guy plays bishop back to g3, which is very slow and prophylactic. Um, if I play rook d5, c4, and I takes d4, looks good. So I like putting my rook in the center like this and challenging his pieces to some degree. All right, so bishop a6 is a very sensible move, and one that I, I of course, completely overlooked. Um, but it's also not one I'm wildly scared of. So... I really don't want to let him take this knight and force me to trade queens on d6 because that would um, uh, that would fix his structure. So I'm going to go queen a5, uh, mainly because I don't think I have that much choice, but I also think it's a pretty decent move. So here, knight c5, huh? This really feels like it's begging for violence. Uh, g5, take, take. g6 is coming, queen g4 is coming. Looks very scary for black. Fg5, f take, e takes f4, gf6, fg3, rookie one check or something. Looks utterly devastating. King g7, queen g4, fg7, I take the bishop. So let's go g5 and start throwing stuff. It's um, not the only way of playing this, but it looks really good. Um, and I think black is in trouble. So Jesus VP has taken this. That makes sense. But now I'm ready for like rook c1 and knight b5. So it's not his c7 pawn will be a long-term weakness that I can hopefully harass. And once I play rook c1, my bishop can tuck back on f1 as needed. So yeah, I was thinking about this, but now if my bishop can tuck back on f1, I don't really think I'm going to get mated. So let's do that. All right. So this guy goes knight d2. Seems like a pretty sensible move. I don't think any tricks work if bishop d4, he has bishop c6. Um, so I'm just going to tuck this bishop back on e7. Whoa, so he sacrifices an exchange, but I don't think this will work. Uh, because I'm going to be able to take his bishop and then go rook a8, which seems quite sufficient here. Uh, and then that should be winning for me. All right, so here I'm absolutely winning. Um, what do we got? So Jesus VP does play knight h4. Or knight f4, but yeah. So here a4 comes, and now... It's actually annoying for me to coordinate. I haven't been able to trade enough pieces. Let me try knight a5 just to pressure the c3 pawn. All right, so he plays EF4, and what I had calculated here was if I take on F6 and then go some combination of rook one check, FG7, and queen G4, I'm taking his bishop, and I don't see anything wrong with that yet. So I can also start with rook one check here, but I don't see a great reason to. Um, so I can also play GF6, FG3, and then queen G4, because he cannot take with the queen on F6, and I'm threatening fg7. If he takes gf6, I have rook e1, bishop e7, knight f5, and then rook c7, and he's sort of alive. I'm going to take f6 first. That's easy enough. Let him figure out if he wants to, um, to take or not. Okay, so here this guy plays queen c7, and I think now he's just busted. Once I get h5, I should just mate. Okay, so rook takes f4, I think, is really a questionable decision, because uh, white could have... 
I mean, even if he wanted to sacrifice an exchange, he could have just gone like knight e4 and not opened up my bishop and not fixed my structure. So here, I actually have two very tempting captures. I can capture gf4 and hope for queen g5, but I can't, I mean, this, the one thing I don't like about the king of Zanian, and the big reason that I've basically never played it is I hate that bad bishop, and now that it's a good bishop, I'm pretty happy to make that change. All right, so knight g5, and actually this is looking a lot scarier than I gave it credit for. Um... Like, really a lot. So I'm going to play knight e2 and get rid of this knight on f4. All right, so fg3, and now I'm just thinking how violent I can be. So I believe that it's just a piece to play rook e1 check, fg7, and queen g4 check. That seems like a very clean, straightforward way through. Uh, but, nah, that's, that's not it think it this is just i mean i probably could do something else but a piece is good enough for me okay so bishop h3 oh i just completely blundered that move that's okay um i'm actually gonna sack an exchange here i'm quite happy to let him take my rook i don't think my rook was a great piece all right so queen e3 from this guy let's provoke some weaknesses with bishop g5 uh because now he's gonna have to play f4 which compromises his position quite a bit um because if he plays bishop f4, I can take it and take on c3. All right, so this guy takes on e2, f4 here as expected. And now let's go bishop h4 and trade off a pair of minor pieces. And without, I, don't, I think because I've provoked f4, he can't get the queen to h6 or anything. I'm not worried about getting mated anymore. And um, my I have good play against the hanging pawns. So... Let's see, Vili has made a move. Yeah, so here I think taking this and queen g4 is just the easiest way through. I mean, it's not glorious, like his king will escape to c7, but I mean, white's just dead winning, so I don't particularly care. Um, Molefish goes for f4, so let's keep bringing the king. Yeah, so check. And uh, yeah, I'm going to end up with a piece up here. So Dr. Boki has played knight h5, that makes sense. Um, and now uh, f3, g3, queen d7, and bishop e5 looks really scary for white. But this is a kind of position that's actually going to be a little bit annoying to break through. I'm going to start by putting my bishop on e5. I just can't tolerate such a bad bishop. All right, so here my thought was I could take with the knight, and now there are some threats. All right, so rook b8. If queen c7, what's your big idea? I'm not sure I see it. So please show me. Right, yeah, so here I take this, king e4. Right, so how do I want to finish this one off? Um, let's start with f5 and g5. Seems like a good place to begin. Um, Just a little more protein shake before it started. So here we have a move take and take, sure. So king e3, g5. And once I can solve the problem of this b5 pawn being a bit vulnerable, or the c4 pawn being a bit vulnerable, my rook should easily finish off the game. All right, so rookie one from Dr. Boki. Seems reasonably likely the guy might want to sacrifice on e5. Um, so, could play rook e8, but queen g4 will be annoying. Um, I'm kind of tempted by queen e8. My queen will reroute somewhere more intelligent, and I'm threatening f3. If queen e8, bishop b2, f3, g4... Not so easy. Let's go rook e8 and keep everything as solid as possible. So, yeah. King h2. Um, where is this bishop going? I don't actually see a great square. Okay, so he plays knight e7. That's totally sensible. Um, but let's say I go... Bishop g4, and I'm ready to take on f5 if he goes there. And I think my kingside play is pretty good. All right, 
So let's see what this guy's big plan was. All right, here, queen, d7. Let's get the bishop out. Seems good enough. Um, so... All right, so Pines resigned, so good game, Pines. Uh, let's see who else is playing here. Jesus VP, we'll see if he had a big idea here that I didn't see. I thought my king would just sit on F2 and be pretty comfortable. Um, VLE is busted. Molefish has played G3, sure. Um, let's get this rook down to the first rank. Okay, Bishop F1, I guess that makes some sense. Let's... Um, Let's go b5. No, b5, there's knight e4. Maybe it was just dumb to do this. Uh, let me tuck the rook back to d7 so that I can take on f3 if he plays it. All right, so here, rook d8, fine. Um, and then, Yeah, so this should be winning. Um, how's Bogues doing? I think Bogues is going to get mated very soon. He needed to play h5 last move. This bishop on b7 is just so bad. Alright. Um, Mothish has moved, so... Sure. Um, let me start by provoking his king all the way away, and then bring my rook somewhere better. So h3, that's a good move. He wants to play rook h1, but I think I can start pushing the deep one. So let's push. In fact, actually, how does he stop this guy? I guess he can play hg2, king g2, rook b2, king f2, rook d2, d7, knight e6, and he has it stopped for the moment, but then after rook a7, uh, he can play knight f4. No, he can't, because I have rook a8 and d8 queen. So he would have to start with king g7, king e3, and then bishop c4 comes, and I should be good. So maybe this was careless of me, but it's fine. Okay, so rook cg8, but his pawns will guard my king pretty well. Yeah, so then I thought I could bring the rook back to b1, and now I'm ready to play um, rook b6 and rook b2. All right, so bishop d2 from this guy seems totally sensible. Um... This will be hard to break through. I do give him that. So let me think, where do I want? My queen needs to activate somehow. Um, like I could just go like rookie seven to go queen f8. That looks pretty good actually. Keep everything protected, go queen f8, other rook to e8. That seems like a really good coordination. Let's do it. Um, okay, so knight f3, he's happy letting me take this knight which I guess makes sense now that I've been stupid enough to make a weakness on um, on a6, but uh, let's see. So if I take it and rook c7, now this still should be pretty good for me. I can go, um, I'm going to play for rook c7, and then um, after that I can play knight c4. So here, though, he wants to play knight f5, fair enough, but I don't think it will be wildly helpful. I mean, his rooks are not dramatically better than my piece there. All right, so here let's, I don't want to do this. I could just go like c3 for maximum violence. Yeah, let's go c3. All right, so take, take, and then this one. Um, let's take his rook and go rook d8 to activate. So here I'm actually very happy to see that move because now the tension is resolved. So b6 here. Let's start with rook c7, and then after rook c1 or something, play knight c4. All right, so he starts with knight e6. Um, so here can I play bishop c4? Because he can't take my rook. If he gives rook b2 check, I go king g3, knight f4, d7, and I'm mated. So I have to be a bit more careful than that. Bishop c4, rook b2, and what gives? I can play, I can just walk my king towards the center. King f1, rook b1, king f2, rook b2, king e1. That seems good. So yeah, bishop c4 looks like the move here. Let's do it. All right, so a5, 
Let's take it. Okay, h4, I'm gonna go g4 and blunt his pieces. Now my king gets the d5 score as well. All right, so bishop g4 makes some sense. Um, stopping f3 and whatnot. So I'm gonna go with my plan of queen f8, another rook to e8. I think that is good. Am I missing something here or am I making a queen? Um, yeah, I thought he had to give check on b2, but yeah, unless I'm missing something here, I'm making a queen. Um, so you hear me to do, let's go d8, check and king g3 and I make a queen. Um, Toro is moved. Yeah, so rook e3 and my point was here, I can go knight c4. And this is not nearly as convincing as I would like. I think white is more or less fine, but I don't know. You, I probably just played really badly at some point. Yeah, so here I get to make a queen. Um, all right, so knight f5, let's go bishop d2 and stop b4. All right, so back to e7 and start harassing on a3. Oh, did I just blunder f5? Nah, I can play queen d6. Um, let's see. So Vili looks very much busted here. Mulfish plays uh, king f2, but king d2, f2, but now actually I can play king d5 because he's given me the f3 score by letting me play g4. All right, yeah, so there. And now... If I play rook e8, bishop d7 is maybe a bit annoying. I could start with queen f7. That seems pretty good. I don't think he wants to play bishop e6 then. So yeah, let's go queen f7. And all right. So this guy goes uh, rook a1. I'm not worried about anything, so let's start with a slow improving move. All right, this guy is still playing. That's fine. All right, king e3. But now I can bring my rook enforce some rook exchanges so here um let's give check and then rook e3 is coming and that's going to be made very soon so um other games this one's over this one's moving slowly but interesting turn around dr bookie Yeah, this Dr. Boki game was very interesting. I mean, I don't really understand King's Indian, but I, uh, and I've never really studied the bayonet, but I thought that we got an interesting position. Um, and I thought I came up with an interesting plan. But at the same time, whenever I play the King's Indian, which is basically never, I've literally never played it in a real game uh, or a classical one. But whenever I play it online or something, I, I can always just, like, hear the voices of, like, you know, Kasparov and Rajabov and Nakamura and Ding Lirid and Ferugia and all these guys who actually do play the King's Indian and know what they're doing. I can just feel them laughing at me with my stupid decisions. But um, this one I think I've actually not done so badly. All right, so here we have another move here. Bishop c5 from Bogues, but this should be made. Wait, if I take this one... So here, rook e3, king f4 from Mulfish, but now I can go rook b2 and force a pair of rooks off. I have to be a little bit careful of the h-pawn, but I'm not exactly quivering in my boots. So here, queen e2, sure, let's go check on rook d2. Um, Bogues. So Bogues plays FG, and now I could just be boring and win the game with material uh, with something like bishop takes f5, and then meeting e takes f5 with knight e6. And after bishop e3, queen e3, I'm taking his rook. That seems very convincing. Um, so it's a little bit prosaic and boring, but might just be what I should do. Well, I'm going to start with bishop f5, and then I'll make up my mind. How about that? Okay, d5 here. Whoa, did I just blunder this move completely? That'd be a bummer. Yep, I just blundered this move completely. 
So, how bad is it though if I play e5? Rook a1, f6, rook e4, knight d6. I actually don't see what he's going to do if I play e5. I'm going to give it a try because why not? Alright, so a5 from black, sure. Let's start making trouble on the king's side. Rook d2. Refresh, hopefully this will cycle me back to the games correctly. Um, so auto switch on. No, I don't have the um, the ones where I was uh, or where the game's already over. So Bogues has taken E F five. So now I um, have to choose between like Rook H six followed by Rook H one and trying to mate him and trying successfully. Let's put it. I think it's very unlikely Black will save that, but don't know. I'm. This is just, maybe I'm just too professional or whatever, but it just feels like here, you see knight e6, and this is a move that I evaluate has a 100% certainty of winning the game. And when Boris Galfand always said, whenever you see a move with 100% certainty of winning the game, you play it without thinking twice and just preserve the time on the clock. Um, it doesn't matter how fast you win, it just matters that you win. Yeah, so he plays fe5, and now I'm very happy to see this. Um, but uh, he could have... Maybe tried like rook a e one and f four instead. So yeah, here let's go check, and this should finish off quickly. So yeah, he takes e three, and now white is completely winning after either knight c seven or um or queen takes e three. So if queen e three d four, queen takes d four. I don't know. That's actually maybe a little bit annoying. If I go knight c seven, bishop d two, rook d two, rook c eight. Knight e6, knight d4, like that is just so strategically finished that it just feels like hang on. But if queen if queen e3, if queen a5 is a little let's just take the queen and be boring. Um yeah, so rook d1 here, let's go um let's go queen d4. Alright, so queen b3 from Dr. Boki. Makes sense, but I wanted to play rook a e8 anyway, so I'm gonna do it. Um don't really get the point. So yeah, queen e4, and now the thing is I get f6. And once this knight is anchored on e5, I'm in good shape. All right, so he goes b4. Let's go h5 and start breaking up the king side. So here I can take this. Rook there, sure. Um, let's just as better safe than sorry. Let's block the d-pawn and then threaten mate. So he must play like king g1 and then I'll take on c3 and black is clearly better. Um. Yeah, so this one with Pablo is an interesting position. I'm not entirely sure about this exchange I sacrificed, but I kind of like it now because I'm not even remotely worried about opening the H file. I mean, it seems like crazy far-fetched for like to imagine him just mating me somehow with queen H1. I just don't see that happening. And here, if I get to play like H takes G6 and then um, after HG knight F4, like his king side really is coming under pressure and his rooks are not particularly better than my pieces and my extra pawn really counts. What if he plays gh5 here and I go bishop takes f5 and knight h4? That's also sort of feels like it's falling apart. Um, whenever you are evaluating any exchange sacrifice, the first thing you should always ask yourself is how good are the rooks? Not how many pawns do I get, not what's the compensation or what. It's just how good are the rooks? That is always the first question. And here his rooks aren't terrible, but they're really not that intimidating either. And so I'm pretty satisfied with the position. All right, so let's see. Midao has played knight e2. Um, Let's just let's just end this prosaically. Yeah. So here, check. Um, how's everyone else doing? Let's not. Yeah. So here, Bogues has played d4. Okay. So I guess that makes sense to do it here. Um, yeah, that's actually a really clever move. Uh, so if I play rook h3, I am attacking the bishop and forcing him to take on d2. Then he goes rook c8, and I go knight d4, and I knight e6, and I take his d4 pawn. 
And this is, he'll get his bishop to e4, which is kind of annoying, but with the clean pawn up, I should be pretty easily winning. So let's go rook h3 and force him to take on d2. Um, and then when I get knight e6 and knight takes d4, I don't love that his bishop got the e4 score, but I don't think I care that much. I can go b3, king b2, and, and it seems like it's winning. So Toro has played that. All right, so let's take on c3, and I think black should be better here. Um, the d pawn feels more like a weakness than a strength. All right, so here let's go rook a8 check, and if he takes it, I have... Actually, let's go queen c6. That seems like the fastest knight. So yeah, bishop d2, as predicted, here takes... All right, so queen d3 from Dr. Boki, but now I'm wondering if I can do something direct. So f3, g3, bishop takes g3, rook takes e7, bishop takes f2, king f2, and I think he's alive, um, which is a bit frustrating. Um, f3, g3, knight, g2, it just makes, just makes no sense. f3, g3, bishop, g3, rook e7, bishop f2, rook e7, bishop f3, he's very much alive there. So I've consolidated my extra piece, but I need to figure out how to win. Uh, and it looks like I have some time on all my games, so I can think for a bit here. Um, I could just duck the bishop back to h8 and try to open the lines and win that way. I mean, do I have to worry about bishop e6? I don't think I do. I'll always have rook e6 and queen h5. Let's start by exchanging these rooks and get this bishop. I could put it on g7 as well. I'm not particularly worried about him taking it. I'm happy to, I'm reasonably happy with that exchange. I don't know. Actually, no. Then bishop c3 comes. Let's go bishop h8. This feels like the easiest way. All right, so take this. Yeah, so bishop e7 from Pablo, but this feels like something should fall pretty quickly. So if I go knight f4, g5 is not that clear. Um, I could just start with queen f3 to increase the pressure. That seems like really nasty. What's he going to do? Knight f4 is coming soon. I'm not going to overthink it. Let's go to queen f3. Yeah. So he takes this, but now rook a8 is made next. Yeah. So here, um, let's just see, bishop a6. And now, um, how do I want to finish this off? Or finish this off? I'm only slightly better. I shouldn't be so direct. Um, so where do my pieces belong? My knight sort of feels right on e5. I'd like to get my rook to like d3, but I can't. Let's start by gaining space on the king side. I think that's a good place to begin. So Vili is going to be mated next move by rook a8. I think any legal move rook a8 is coming. So I'm just going to pre-move it. Uh, Bogues. I mean, Bogues has to play like... You know, rook f7, I guess. Knight takes d4, but that's just a very clean pawn for me. Plus the good structure. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should have tried to mate Bogues, but I didn't feel the need. All right, so now let's refresh now that another game has ended. Uh, so now the auto switch will not take me back to that one. Looks like how many have left? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, one, two, three, four, five games left. And a couple of them seem close to over. So it takes d4. Yeah, he probably should have put the rook on f7 so the rook could get to c7, but it, I still don't think it will help him. He seems basically winning for white. All right, so Dr. Boki has played rook e6. Um... But here, I think I'm pretty happy to just take everything. Why not? So if he takes with the bishop, I can probably get away with taking the bishop and taking the knight. His queen is pretty well shut out. Um, but yeah, this is not going to work well for white, I don't think. All right, so he takes with the pawn. 
And now I think I'm just going to sacrifice this exchange. I'm happy with that. Uh, and then I will end up with an extra pawn and his knight on h5 actually. Once the bishop on g4 is exchanged, his knight on h5 gets into like pretty serious danger pretty fast. So, uh, unless he can do something direct, which I don't think he can. I mean, his pawns are advanced, but I'm not wildly scared. Um, so f3 here, sure. Let's go e5, I guess. Um, and then bogues, rook c4. So, seems like a sensible move, but I'm going to go b3, kick the rook away, and then go king b2. Seems fine. Um, but b3, rook c7, king b2, rook c8, and then... Hmm. It's definitely winning for white, but probably could have been more incisive. Is there any other thing I can... I, I can't let his rook stay there and play rook d8 on me, so I got to do that. All right, so this guy plays bishop b5. I suppose that's sensible. Um, I'm going to try queen c5 and potentially get ready to make trouble that way. All right, knight f8 is a very good move from Pablo. Um, but it still feels very dangerous for him. So I don't really see how he wants to get his rook into the game, which is his big problem. So I'm going to go knight f4 and increase the pressure. His opponent disconnected. That's Wesley. That was from the Banter Blood Scope. Okay, so Bishop C3 from this guy. I guess it makes sense to try to harass my king to some degree. Um, I'm just wondering if I can do something direct here. I don't think so. If I play Queen G6, Queen C4... I have to be somewhat careful in these end games. Like if his, If I play Queen G6 and he takes it, and then goes like bishop h8, knight f6, knight d5. I can just lose like without a fight if I'm not careful there. So I could play f3 here. That's actually really tempting because if bishop h8, uh, queen e1, king h2, fg2, queen d5, and I'm mated, yeah? No, I'm not mated. I'll have queen e5 at the end. Hang on. So f3. Okay, this is messy position so there i have other games where i can play faster i'll come back to that in a second all right so here let's go um let's go king b2 this one let's take here and then we're back to dr Boki. yeah okay i got time everywhere let's think so hang on wait does queen b3 win a piece where does this queen go queen e4 queen takes c3 and i will have my bishop on g7 so I don't actually see his move after queen b3. He goes queen e4, queen takes c3, say queen e6, king h7, queen d7, or queen f7, bishop g7, and I think I'm very much alive there. He can take c7, but it feels like he has to be getting mated. Um, I can go queen e1 check, king h2, knight f3 check, and then gf3, queen f3 check, Queen f2 check, king h1, queen f3 check, take the knight, and I will get f3 through, and that has to be mate. Yeah, so I think queen b3 is working here. His queen gets to e8 or something, but I don't see where it goes next. So let's give it a try. It's not letting me make a move? Okay, there we go. All right, so Toro. Rook e1, I guess that makes sense, but... Um, have to be a little bit careful here. Because uh, I'd like to play something like rook c2, or, but rook c2, he has d6. And once that pawn gets moving, it's going to be hard to stop. If queen f2, d6 as well is annoying. Let's see. So what if queen f2, d6, rook h3 is too much? It's not going to work. Um, knight f3, he'll have at least queen e7. And probably more. So here, how do we finish this off? Or even cause him any trouble? Let me start with rook b3. I want to play rook b4 and rook d4. I think that makes some sense. All right, so bishop g5 from Pablo. Seems very sensible, but I'm also not scared of him taking that knight. So um, could open up another front. I could do something like take g6, take f5, and take b4 when I've taken a second pawn and 
I'm opening the queen side to some degree. Uh, it doesn't feel amazing, but it doesn't feel bad either. What's the alternative? Hang on. So what if I play, okay, I think I see an interesting one. I'm gonna take on g6 and we'll first let him figure out how he wants to take back. So let's abort this. Um... Oh yeah, I know what happens. I was from the banter blitz club and because Wesley beat me in like whatever, nine games or something when we were supposed to go to 10 if it had gone the full way. Um... What that game hadn't actually started yet because it wasn't played. Okay, so let me start with a3 here and get some pressure. So d3, this one's easy. All right, so queen e4, and my thought here was I take this bishop and then my queen gets back in time. All right, so this guy goes rook d1. That seems like a very sensible move. Now, do I have to play queen d6? Because that'd be depressing. If I go rook b4, where does this queen go? It's actually not easy for him to find a square. Queen e2 or something, I can go rook d4, and then I'm in pretty good shape. I'm going to try rook um, b4. All right, so he plays fg6. And here I was actually thinking I can play knight g6, because if bishop d2, I have knight h8. If knight g6, I go bishop f5, ef, and then queen takes f5, and his pieces are forked. And I didn't see a way out for him. He can maybe try knight h4 there. It's actually a pretty good move. But after gh4, bishop d2, and knight d2, he cannot ever bring the queen to h4. So I think knight g6 is working. Um, yeah, so here he goes for a5. And my thought was now I can play a4 when he sort of has to make up his mind how he wants to play. Because I don't think he wants to let my knight land on d6. But if he plays uh, bishop a6, then he cannot put the bishop on e4 anymore. So let's keep pushing this one, queen e6, so king h7. I think I'm good here. Yeah, so here my thought was rook d4. Yeah, so now let's see how this goes and if I missed anything. All right, um, okay, I probably could be fancier than that, but we're going to finish this off easily. All right, so the question now for Dr. Boki is can he make something happen here? I believe the answer is no. I think I'm winning. So take, take. Okay, Mideo, you're just taking up my time at this point. Um, so here, take this one. It's not so easy for him to defend the d5 pawn now. And at some point I can start threatening his king a bit with my queen and knight. Plus end games could be difficult for a while. Like if I just run and stick my king on d6 and then threaten to trade queens, I mean, it's not so easy. Um, the queen and knight are a good attacking duo. All right, so there, sure, but I have no idea what your next move is. So I'm gonna start by gaining more space. Okay, so here. All right, so Dr. Boki resigned. Um, he could have kept fighting with queen d7 and trying to take the pawn, but I don't think it works. Uh, so good game, Dr. Boki. That was the most interesting one we had here, at least in my opinion. Um, all right, so now how do I want to make further progress? I think starting by bringing the king closer to the center can't be wrong, but I actually think I should reroute my knight to d6. That's a good place to start. All right, so he goes for bishop e4, which makes sense uh, because, but now my thought was I could play knight b5. I mean, I can't do it yet, but like I can prepare for it. So if I start with rook h2, overprotect this guy, now my knight gets the b5 square, and then that will win the game. So... Uh, let me refresh the page just so that there's only um, active games going on. Uh, looks like there's three left. And Pablo is, or, yeah, so, um, yeah, so uh, Pablo, I think, is, uh, has to try, like, EF5, Queen F5, Knight H4, but I think I'm good after GH4 because following... Bishop d2, knight d2, he cannot play queen takes h4. I'll take on c8. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this game, black just never really managed to activate his rooks in the right way, and I think that's why uh, the exchange sacrifice worked out. I'm not convinced it was that amazing when I made it, but at this point, it seems like white is winning.
Um, Toro is still thinking. Bogues has played rook c7. But my thought here was I'm ready with knight b5. And now knight d6 is coming. And once knight d6 comes, I can even put the knight on c4 and start taking pawns that way. As soon as I like neutralize his annoying pressure on the c file, it's very much over. So. I mean, he can play rook c3 here, which is tricky, but as long as I don't take the rook, I'm good. So I'll go knight d6, and then that seems good. All right, so Pablo has brought the knight back to f8, but once I've gotten away with that pawn, I'm a very happy camper. So I'm going to start with bishop c2, get the bishop to safety, and eyeball the a4 square in some cases. And here, actually, he can't even, he can take my bishop, because bishop a4, he has knight d7. I thought it was made for a second, but... But yeah, I think I should be winning this pretty routinely. The, the, my, at this point, I've taken a pawn, and material is now equal, so to speak, and I think my pieces are just better. Uh, I think my bishop and two pawns are notably better than black's rook. So for my auto switch has to come back on. Okay, so bishop d3, that makes sense. Let's go f5 and blunt it. Seems easy enough. Okay, did Wesley beat me with two games to go? That's embarrassing. Uh, then here's Nihal, that's from the Banter Blitz Club as well. That that match I did win. Um, okay, so rook e8, rook e c7, but now I can go knight e8 to f6 even. Looks really good. Let's do it. Because he cannot, um, he's going to have to put his rook on the seventh rank, and that's not something he's happy about. So yeah, this one, I don't know. I probably could have made it bug somehow, but... Uh, what I did was, it's the Boris Gelfin style, just as soon as you see a move that wins, you play it. End of discussion. And Boris is pretty good at chess, so I try to listen to him. All right, so Pablo here. I could have flicked in Bishop by 4 check if I wanted, but I didn't see a huge point. Maybe it would have been smarter too, because now he can at least run with his king with king d7, but still seems really good for me. So, yeah, so this game is yeah, Black's Rooks just never did their thing this game. Although at this point, his position's actually still reasonably solid, and it's going to take some effort to break down. Maybe I should have. Actually, I really think I should have checked on a4 last move. Okay, so I won on time. I think I should have checked on a4 last move because here it's occurring to me he can play queen g5 and after bishop a4 he can run away with his king. So it's not like queen g5 is wildly scary. Like I can play, I don't know, like knight f1 or something and he's not threatening queen h1 or queen h2 anytime soon. But if I had played bishop a4 check first, I would have forced him to play knight d7 and self-pin. Anyhow, it looks like we have two games left now. Bogues and Toro, so Bogues has played rook e8, but now this should start taking stuff. Um, so knight f6 check, and now um, I guess he can play king f8, but then I can go knight h7 check and knight back to f6, and I've taken another pawn, and I'm ready to bring the rook in next without allowing rook c2. So yeah. I think I got this Bogues. It's harder to get the real Bogues, though. He's pretty good too. All right, so bishop a6 from Toro. Um, I think I should probably just start throwing stuff at his king. So I'm going to try to mate him that way. Claim that I have the d-pawn well under control and that I will use my pawn majority to go give checkmate. Seems like a pretty reasonable game plan. Uh, and I can even consider stuff like, I'm thinking about like g4 or knight d6, knight e4. I mean, there's ways I can really start harassing that king quite a bit. Um, so yeah, Bogues here is now down two pawns and his king is going to get mated pretty soon. So that seems pretty convincing. Yeah, this should be made soon. So 
so rook h c6. I suppose that's sensible. He wants to meet rook h7 check with um, with king e6 uh, without getting mated. So that seems like a totally reasonable thing to play, but I also don't think it will save him. So how do I want to finish this off? I can, if I take on e4, d, e, f, e4, rook, h, e2, d3, rook, d3, take, take, king, e6. I mean, that's so many pawns. Yeah, let's just do that. I mean, I've been so boring this game. I could have been much more direct, but that's okay. All right, so here, let's go. Wait, if g4, he can't take the pawn because I have queen i1 and g3 mate. So let's go g4. Yeah, so here my thought was I'm taking all of his pawns. And he can get his king to f5, which is a bit annoying, but that's just too many pawns. Like, I don't know. Yeah, so here Toro is, his king could come under some pretty serious fire sooner rather than later. Wait, what am I missing here? Oh, shoot. I'm missing that he has the b1 square. Oh, boy, and I had half an hour or two and still blew it. All right, let's play g3 and cut his king off. Um, I still think white's in trouble here, despite the pawn up. I literally just blundered queen a1 that he can bring something back to b1. But I still think white's just much worse here. Like, the d-pawn is well under control. His king is in serious trouble. And... Um, He's running into problems on the back rank. So here, like, if I start with knight d6, what's his next move? I mean, the second my knight lands on f2, it's mate, and he is going to have to work really hard to stop that from happening. And a queen trade, funnily enough, like, doesn't even really help him. Like, if we just trade queens and I run my king into, like, e5, despite the pawn down, I'm probably just going to win the endgame. So despite my... Egregious blunder, I think I'm still doing well. So here, rook takes e4, and I have too many pawns. Um, rook f3, and now let's say I go rook d6 check, take, take, king d6, rook e5, rook f4, rook a5, and that is too many pawns, and he doesn't have the necessary counterplay. So let's do that. Get a pair of rooks off, take this one, and then rook e5. Take the a5 pawn, and I got this. So he's never going to have rook f5, so he's never going to have a shred of counterplay. Yeah, so takes, and now I'm threatening rook a6, so I just don't know what he's going to play. I mean, he just looks busted. And Toro is now a pawn up, but I think in serious trouble anyway. All right, so Bogues plays that, but now just check and take the pawn. Seems pretty convincing. Toro is really starting to think, but I don't think there's much for him to do here. It's just a really tough position. Right, so king c5, I'll take this one and now. And now everything's going to win. All right, so let's bring the rook back down like that. And then... Um, so g6, and now I might just... Yeah, so here, let's just be nice and simple and get three connected passers. Seems like good policy. So g7, and now I can even force a rook exchange. So good game, Bogues. You fought hard, but I think that endgame was not savable. Um, this classical Sicilian here, you cannot allow white to play bishop e3, g4. If that happens, you tend to just be in big trouble. And in my course, I made clear point to, to not let that happen, except under like really specific circumstances. But okay, so good game, Bogues. Looks like we got one game left. Toro, you are the last man standing. Um,
I don't know if you're a fan of fatty tuna, but that's what I've always thought Toro meant. Okay, so um, bishop c2, sure. I guess, what does he want with this move? If I play queen five, he will struggle to defend um, the e1 square. He can play queen b1 though. Um, I could just start bringing my king. Problem is, I think the only way I'm going to win this game now is I have to bring my king to like a5 and take his pawns along the way. So if I play king f6, queen f3 check. King e5, queen h5 check is kind of annoying. So I think I can start with queen f4. I, I don't want to let his queen get to f3. So let's go queen f4. And now I'm threatening queen f1 and queen c1 is in the air as well. So if queen f3, I think the end game should just be winning for me. Um, so he can try checking, but I don't think it will help a ton. Because queen c3, I have um, king g8, and there's no more checks. This is going to take some effort to win, though. I'm really mad at myself for um, for not realizing that he could take the pawn. Yeah, so here, let's uh, start bringing the king. Feels like the way to go. And at some point, white's almost in zitz one. Once I take the pawn on d5, then I can start invading more with the king and get the king all the way into like d2 and try to trade queens on e1. It's going to be a bit of a project to win this game, but probably doable. So queen e1 is a very good move. So if I play queen e5, I don't think he can trade queens. So let's do it. And start to bring my king around to a better place. If I can bring my king around to like to c7, and it it will take a lot of effort to win this game, but I do think it should be doable. I do have to be careful though, actually. I was always thinking he can never take my pawn, but actually last move, maybe he could have because, no, I mean, I would have taken the bishop on c1, but um, I have to be careful not to allow his queen to run back to g1. So he could even play like queen g1 here. Problem is my knight needs to get to f2 and it can't. That bishop on c2 is covering every single avenue that it might use. All right, so queen d1, sure. Let's start bringing the king around. And next up is maybe like knight c4 to e3 and then king d6. And basically I'm just gonna sort of argue that his king will not get into the game. And as a result, I'm basically playing with a piece up. Uh, now granted that piece is my king, so I've gotta be careful with it, but Probably enough to win. So, what we got, Toro? I'm gonna take a short break. I'll be back in like half a minute. Or actually, no, he already moved. Okay, so he's threatening that pawn. He heard me about that, but if I go knight c4, this knight could get to e3. So I'm going to do that and then go blow my nose.
So I'm back and bishop d3 has been played, but my thought was here my knight gets to e3, where it's pretty good. And I think, so the first step of this plan, I guess, is to take the d5 pawn. And that, it seems like I'm going to pull off without any further difficulty. Um, so queen e1. That's a very risky move to make. Can I play knight g4? So if knight g4, if he takes my queen, I think he's dead lost. My king is way too close to the action. If he plays queen b4 check, where does my king go? g6. And then he has hg4, and I don't have queen e1, and I don't have queen a1. Oh, that's lucky. That's very lucky. Um... So let's start with queen d4, stopping um, his queen from reaching b4 and getting ready for king d6 next. It's a shame knight, c knight g4 didn't work there. It almost did. Uh, but here, uh, queen d4 is quite fine. Actually, this knight on e3 is really good now. I don't know why I kept put. I had it on d6 this whole time. I guess here, like, his queen is just so dominated and doesn't have a way into make any trouble so this this seems like i'm pretty confident this is winning now before i thought i had good chances but here i'm guessing like if you put this in the machine it'll say like the black is dead winning Tor is a good fighter, I have to say. He played a pretty good game so far, but I think now I finally have this one. Too many threats. I can go king d6 next, and then if I can take the a4 pawn at some point, that's even worse for him. Um, and everything in my position is defended, so this seems to work. Okay, so bishop e2, I suppose that makes sense. Um, no trickery if knight g2, queen e4, he has king g1, that's a bummer. Uh, so let's start with king d6, just get this king to into action. Um, but, oh, he can play bishop, d, bishop f3 here, and then... Yeah, I really need to slow down. Why am I playing so fast? I have time. Bishop f3, I thought I had queen f4, but again, there is queen e3, and his queen gets to g1. Um, so, and now my knight doesn't really get to move either because of check on e6. Um, so... Let's bring the king to f4 and defend the knight, and then try to take stuff. That was really careless of me. But still, his queen is really bad, so I have a feeling I might not be punished. Yeah, I really should have taken that pawn on d5, and then if I had this exact same position without the pawn on d5, it'd be absolutely winning and very easy. I'd stick the king on f4, and he would not be able to defend against all the threats to like a4 and d1, and there's just too many weak squares. But when he still has the d5 pawn alive, it means that uh, queen d1 is not as much of a threat. So, But still, he's almost in some kind of z spawn here.
Maybe I should have just taken d5, lost move, bishop d5, king d5, and no checks, and go defend a4. He could have played a5, though. So... And then after BA5, he'd have a suicide quit with like queen E6, uh, which should be enough. Um, yeah. This guy's fighting well, but he's getting low on time, and this position is going to be a nightmare to play for white with no time. With black, you can always just move. All right, so D6, that I'm very happy to see. So I'm going to take with the king, and now once more I think I should be winning because my king will run to f4 to defend that knight and then I can start to threaten moves like queen d1 under or queen takes a4 when white has trouble just solving them yeah he may have been in some kind of z swarm wait okay so that's his big idea aha so if I take it queen a5 and somehow he has all the squares under control that's a real bummer if I start with knight c2 he goes queen c1, ba5, and he has the d1 square. Man, this guy is defending really well, I have to say. But I still don't believe it, because if I play b5 and this pawn gets going, I don't think his a pawn is good enough. My queen has it under control. So I'm going to be a little bit risky here, because now his a pawn is pretty good. But I think I can just blockade it with my king even. And yeah, so here if I go... B4, what's his next move? Still can't play a7. Takes queen before his check, he can't play a7. So if I go king c7, that seems pretty good. Yeah, king c7 and get this king to b8. If queen c1, I have king b8, a7, queen a7, and I'm good to go. So let's go king c7. And once this king gets... Once my king can stop the pawn, I think I should be winning. But maybe he can just play a7 and queen c3 here, and he's getting too many checks. And I'll have knight c4, queen g7, king b6. You know, he, I think he has to try. Or did I just blunder queen a5? Man, I'm playing so badly today. Okay, queen b5, queen b6 is not the end of the world, but it's bad that I didn't see it. It's just that point in the Simo where you just want it to be over and you're playing too fast. It's careless and irresponsible. Yeah, I totally blundered queen a5 here. That's really bad. I don't know what he's thinking about. I mean, it's sort of an only move. Queen c1. That I don't think is good. So this, maybe I'm lucked out. Because queen c1, I think I can just go king b8. And he has no more checks. And a7, I have queen a7. So yeah, I think he had to play up. He could have played a7 or queen a5. I think both of them would have been at least good enough for a draw. But now I believe after king b8, he's out of luck. I've, but I've believed that before this game, only to like blunder it like an absolute knucklehead not that long after as well. All right, so queen b1. And now if I go b4, does he have the queen somewhere? I don't see it. I could also go king a7 because he cannot... I kind of like king a7 more. He cannot take my pawn. If queen h7, king a6, I'm not remotely scared. My king just runs up. So let's go king h7, 
King A7. Yeah, so I think this guy was just a move away from saving the game and then let it go. If he had played Queen A5, I'm not even sure how how I would have drawn. Uh, probably would be okay, but it's really, really sloppy on my part. Yeah, here I think I got this now. This queen is just too bad. Maybe he can try bishop e2, but should not work. He has to try it, but bishop e2 actually, let's think. b4, then queen h7 is a problem. And he's going to get counterplay. So yeah, actually, it's not yet over after bishop e2. I have to be a bit careful to finish it off without allowing some monkey business. I was thinking queen d5, but then he has queen h7 and queen h6 and take the knight. Which is not great either. But I think bishop e2 is absolutely only move, and if he doesn't find that, then I'm going to win. All right, so bishop c6 instead. Um... But here I, oh, b4, queen, h7, very clever. Do I care though? b4, queen, h7, king, b6, queen, b7, king, c5, queen, a7. Yes, I care. Um, if I play knight d1, queen, h7 is coming again. Man, this guy is resourceful. I play queen d1, he's definitely not going to lose. Um, queen knight 7 is coming, yeah? Ugh, boy. Hmm. How are we going to pull this out? I've been playing too fast this whole game. Here I'm actually going to calculate and try to find a win. Maybe I needed to play b4 last move, and this was a big mistake allowing this. Hindsight is not helpful here, though. Yeah, I needed to play b4 last move. That would have done it. Clever, resourceful fellow this guy is.
Yeah, I think this guy saved it. I don't see a win. It's a real bummer. I just had to play B4 last move. And I give this like one more minute before I call it quits. Um, C6, huh? Nothing left. All right. I'm just going to give this guy his draw. He's defended well, so good game to Toro. I'm a little mad at myself that I didn't win it at the end because I was so careless, but you defended resourcefully, so good game to you. And here, uh, this is going to be a draw as I will shuffle King b6, King a7 forever, and his king is not going to join the game. Maybe he will blunder his pawn on a6, but even then, it's just a dead draw, so... Here and um, nothing to be done. All right, so yeah, is this, this is the resign button, or where's this is the draw button? I think so. I've offered him a draw. All right, so good game, Toro. Um, yeah, this was fun. Uh, good games, everybody. Wish I didn't quite manage a clean sheet, but. Uh, that's how it goes. All right. Uh, I guess we will. This was fun, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.